Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about some very interesting rumors that RDNA 5, or UDNA if you prefer, is going to support major changes to the specifications and microarchitecture, significantly bumping the number of shaders per workgroup processor slash compute unit, and also bringing with it a host of new capabilities that were not present in RDNA 4. We'll be discussing this stuff in just a moment, but first, let's begin with Intel's battle mage, shall we? Specifically, when we can expect the higher end battle mage GPUs such as the uh, B770 to launch. So for those of you who don't know, um, these GPUs are roughly speaking going to be competing against the likes of the RTX 5070, maybe the 5070 Ti, depending on a host of different things. What's the workload? What's the final clock frequency? Drivers? And so on and so forth. And yeah, there's been a lot of rumours regarding the release date for these things, and this has not been helped at all because users were asking Intel just prior actually to Computex, which of course is now gone, what is actually happening with these graphics cards? Can we expect Intel to make some type of announcement? And Intel essentially online pretty much hinted that yes, we can expect Battle Mage to be announced. At the very least, they were giving some pretty big hints. And I covered this in a video, of course, but as you probably can guess, there is no Battle Mage higher end variants anyway that have been announced. The lower end Battle Mage GPUs, though, have been reasonably well received, and this is certainly not hurt by the fact that the drivers have improved significantly, although you could argue they're still not quite where they need to be. Having said that, given what's happening with NVIDIA drivers at the moment, that's not exactly the worst thing in the world. But anyway, there's a very interesting article that's popped up courtesy of Tweakers. Um, and basically, it asserts that the higher-end Battle Mage GPUs are going to launch in the second half of this year, potentially the fourth quarter, although, of course, planning can change. And this uh, information has been obtained during their time at Computex. For those of you who don't know, typically, as long as you're not actually going to quote someone, so if you were to say, I don't know, John at, uh, I don't know, let's say MSI, or Bob at, um, you know, AMD or something like that, that's going to get someone in trouble. But as long as you are a little bit wishy-washy with details and you don't exactly name names, typically speaking, some folks are more willing to talk off the record. And this is certainly how a lot of rumors swirl around. So um, I want to give credit, of course, to tweakers for this, although you may need to use Google Translate. With that said, um, I have asked a couple of sources. One person told me they're not too certain one way or another because there have been so many rumors. For higher-end battle mage, they just know that the plans are still in place. For higher-end battle mage to launch, another f uh, person told me outright that they believe that this is correct. It's going to be the fourth quarter. Now, you may put your hand up and say, well, hang on a minute. All right, let's say that that's true. Let's say the launch... I don't know, let's say four, five, six months from now, whatever. But is it even worth it at that stage? Well, from my understanding, Celestial is going to launch significantly later. At least that's what I'm being told. And obviously, yes, next year we'll see the release of most likely uh, UDNA. We'll be discussing that in just a moment, as I opened with. And also higher-end uh, RTX 60 graphics cards are probably going to be, at the very least, heavily rumoured by that point. Maybe they're going to release in 2027. Who knows? But um, yeah, I think that it's a very good thing for Intel to release it. Obviously, at the end of the day, Intel, at this point, they're not necessarily trying to out-compete NVIDIA or AMD. What they're essentially trying to do is make a name for themselves. I suspect Celestial will be pretty impressive, but as always, we'll just have to wait and see how the chips, if you will, will fall. So there's a really interesting update, actually, for RDNA 5, or UDNA if you prefer, that could well indicate that there are going to be some significant changes for the compute unit layout and lots of other stuff actually for the GPU. So Kepler L2 on the 22nd, you can see a series of numbers. They begin with nine with a couple of points of zero. And then of course, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.10, 4.2 and 
Uh, basically speaking, these seem to be GFX versions, which of course graphics card IP versions, and I believe that they are most likely related to MI series of graphics cards from, of course, AMD. Now, this basically, for those who don't know, MI would be the series of GPUs that would be for like server and stuff like that. But if you filter down a little bit in the comments chain, there's also, it seems to have some differences from RDNA 4. For example, 256 shaders per compute unit, end quote. Now, you can do a little bit of Googling about this if you're not too familiar with the compute unit and work group uh, processor changes that have happened within RDNA uh, 3 and 4. Uh, it's going to take a lot of video for me to explain what actually has changed. But basically speaking, there used to be two compute units per work group processor, but this has since changed quite a bit with RDNA 4. Again, you guys can do a bit of Googling. I don't want to eat up tons of video time explaining the architecture, but what you can also do is take a look at the specifications on AMD.com. So you can spot that the number of compute units in the 9070XT is 64. Meanwhile, the total number of stream processors is 4096. This is the highest end configuration that is for the N48 silicon, of course. And this essentially means that if you do 64 multiplied by 64, or you take 4096 and divide it by 64, whichever way you want to do it, you're going to, of course, come to the conclusion, at least I would hope so, that we have 64 stream processors per compute unit. So this would indicate that this is 4x the amount. That's assuming, of course, that one, this information is accurate, and two, there is not something else going on. Now, it's possible that Kepler has uh, made a typo or some other issue is arising here. Um, I did reach out to some sources because I actually did hear about this quite some time ago, 256, as a number associated with RDNA 5, but I basically just ignored it, to be honest with you guys, because only one person told me this, and quite frankly, I just... I just didn't really believe it. However, I decided to reach out to some sources again because of this um, update from Kepler, and they told me that they think it's not quite like this. Instead, they think it's 256 shaders per workgroup processor. The problem is workgroup processors and compute units have changed their meaning quite significantly across the whole thing, so it's very possible that Kepler is correct. It's very possible that my sources are correct, but the definition has changed or it's possible that it's going to depend based on well the implementation and the key word with well i should say the key letter not the word the key letter with udna is the u it means unified and that basically means that the same architecture is going to be found across a myriad of different use cases gaming of course is one of those and then you also have server and a bunch of other stuff so it's possible for example the gaming variants have a larger number of compute uh, sorry shaders per compute unit or vice versa depending on a bunch of other characteristics i will also add that one of my sources has also told me uh and this is not exactly relating to the same thing but uh still slightly related and that is that essentially with the um for you dna matrix operations can essentially operate uh, so can execute sorry so matrix operations can execute in parallel to vector now to be clear this is not totally new for amd gpus this is actually something that i believe is already present on cdna there's going to be some significant architectural similarities with the latter uh um mi 300 and 350 gpus to what's found in udna to my understanding the matrix cores for example which are part and parcel all of the latest um of the latest amd server gpus they're going to essentially be part of udna but with the caveat that obviously they're going to receive some updates basically this is going to be amd slowly transitioning to an architecture i don't want to say it's similar to a to nvidia's approach because that's not quite fair but uh it's going to basically 
the AMD's version of an NVIDIA architecture. That's the best way of describing it. And the reason I, I, I stress the way I say AMD's approach is because AMD, if you look at across all of their portfolios, so whether that's CPUs, whether that's GPUs and so on and so forth, they have this mentality of like, okay, let's create an architecture or let's create this this stack of products and then be able to figure out how to mix and match it and there have of course been those recent rumors that i covered regarding uh, medusa and medusa point and just for those who don't know regarding medusa although it is important to realize that that's not rdna um, 5 that's going to be based on udna uh, sorry rdna 3.5 um the, the the cpu in that thing you have the you know cluster of uh, eight cores, sorry, twelve cores on the uh, on the CCD complex, but you also on the IOD, whatever you want to call it, it also has a compute complex as well, and that's going to have four dense cores, four classic cores, and also those low power cores. So that's basically AMD being able to kind of use the arc, uh, use all of their chips and kind of just cobble them together. And I don't mean to be kind of disrespectful when I say cobble, but you get the idea, kind of nudge and, and mesh them together as necessary using advanced packaging processes, but you can also take that same ccd and then use it in let's say for sake of argument a desktop processor or you can just have that iod quote unquote and then use that by itself for lower end um apus because obviously that means that that iod will essentially have still four classic cores four dense cores and obviously the lp cores the lp cores will handle background stuff anyway i think that's just about it for this particular video hopefully you have enjoyed it um, also, apologies for not being on camera for this video, I am uh, actually testing out a new camera, so things are a little weird at the moment, I'm still trying to dial in settings and just screw around with things, and I was like, you know what, I'm not really comfortable uh, trying to do this at the moment, because well, like, everything's just busted, so let's fix that first, uh, so audio only for today, but take care of yourselves, bye for now.